Hi everybody, Linda Carroll here from my studio, Gather of Great Things, and I am continuing to work on my Absurd Crow collage. Thanks for joining me, um, and if you didn't see part one, where I did most of the actual paper, cut paper collage, you might want to take a look at that first and then watch this second, although it really doesn't matter because I'm just adding embellishment to, to this at this point. I'm so in love with this. I, the more I look at it, the more meaning I see in it, and I, I just am amazed at how my colors always come together. And so I've been playing here at my desk for about two hours now, and um, I knew that I needed to come up with my personal symbols. So I went back through a lot of my art journals and um, journals that I've kept when I take classes with other instructors and artists. And, um, and I was able to come up with some of my personal symbols. As I'm working, I know that I'll, I'll come up with more. And some of them are already in, in this background. But as I said yesterday, meaning making and telling a story, having a narrative in my collage is one of the most important things to me. So right now what I'm doing is I'm looking through my ransom note alphabet to find letters to spell out crow up here. And I found two C's that are a possibility. So I have these up here. And I'm looking through my R's. And as you can see, I have quite a few different R's. I, I went through magazines and catalogs and, um, oh gosh, books and coloring books to come up with all of these letters. And um, I've been working with these now for probably a couple of years. So I love the way they look. Okay, there's an R that'll work. This is an R possibility. Let's see what else we have here. Don't want all of my letters the same. Here is an R possibility. Okay, so we have three to choose from. And I keep all my letters in these little celestial seasoning tea tins um, that I collected and my mother collected and my sister collected. And I have um, inherited all of them. So, I keep them in this box, and everything's labeled on the top with the letter. So, right now I'm looking for the O, and I'll need a W. Okay. So, go to my O tin. and see what I can find in here. That's a good O. I look, I'm looking at color now. I'm looking at, um, you know, what will work with the images, the other images are in here, whether they're color or black and white. 
Um, and exactly what looks right when I put it down on the page. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say I really like that that O. So we'll we'll figure out if that's the one I'm gonna use. And W and what I do when I looking for letters I want letters that are um, different as much as possible and I also um, want letters of different sizes because different size canvases or paper call for different size letters so see this one this one's too small now, if the rest of them were that size, yeah, okay, that would work. But now that one would work with um, with those letters. Here's a smaller one, a little bit smaller one. Let's see how this works. Yep, that one would work. Crow. See if we have anything else in here. But what I do is I cut out the entire word or phrase, and then I I cut up my my letters out of those, and I sort them into muffin tins, and I have about six muffin tins that I use, and. Um, then once they're sorted into the muffin tins, then I move them into my little tins. Okay, here are my options for crow. So, let's just play with these for a minute. And see what we can come up with. I really kind of like this, this crow, this W here. This one's the only one I'm, I'm thinking might not work. That one's too tall. wondering um, who went ahead and did a uh, collage similar using this same approach um, after you watch the video. No, I don't want to, I don't want these letters to, you know, dominate the entire collage, although they are at the top and they are kind of different, so. But I think, I can either curve it, let it follow the curve of this circle here at the top, or I can put this straight across. I kind of like them straight across. Let's see what happens if we put this one here. I think it stands out too much with that one there.
Okay. So I have my crow up here at the top. And I can put my ones I didn't use away. So I don't lose them. Okay, I'm just going to um, I'm just going to use my glue stick with this and glue those letters down. You know, after I made this collage that night, I could not go to sleep. I kept thinking about the collage and the, um, the style that I'm working in now and how my, um, my style has evolved from when I really really, really became serious about doing collage in uh, 2006. And um, my first um, series of collages, I think I've told you before, were very small. They were three inches by three inches. And I made a number of them. And it was the first and only gallery exhibition that I've ever had were these little three inch by three inch worlds that I did. And they were abstract, but they also told a story. And, um, and then I started doing um, some larger pieces and I've been influenced by a, a lot of different people um, in my in doing collage. Um, I was influenced by Gustav Klimt um, with his the way that he um, put so much as far as texture and image on a, on a canvas. Um, I've been influenced by Tisha Moore um, when I first discovered her, her work and, um, and just, I just adored her collages and indeed used her collage sheets and um, did an entire art journal from 2016 to 2018 and I call it my dancing diva journal. Um, I've also been influenced by Tony Fitzpatrick. He's an artist from Chicago and he lives part-time in Chicago and part-time in New Orleans. He's he, he seems to me to be quite an interesting character, also a wonderful writer. And um, another influence is Chris Roberts Antio, and she she is a textile artist. She um, embroiders beautiful, beautiful textiles and quilts um, on her paintings. Her paintings are actually uh, quilted and embroidered, and I'm lucky enough to have one of her small pieces. Um, but I just love the way that uh, she, her artwork is not super, super um, 
I don't even, I think she's self-taught. I think she's a self-taught artist. But I just love all the colors that she uses. And she's, you know, she's eccentric in the way that she decorates and designs her pieces and also her uh, galleries. They're just fabulous. Um, if you ever have a chance, she has a gallery in New Orleans and she has a gallery in Santa Fe. And I've been to both of them and they are unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. She lives in New Orleans. So, um, I've also been influenced by Colin, I think it is, Colin Johnson. Um, he's a maximalist collagist, uh, and that's putting it mildly. His entire uh, pages and canvases are filled, 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 filled with images. Um, and also plays a part in my collage work is the um, sacred geometry, and we've talked about that. We've talked about uh, Fibonacci series and spirals and everything. Obviously vintage ephemera, because I try to use as much vintage or copies of vintage that I can in my collages. Mythology, I'm, I, I love the myths, especially the Greek myths and specifically the myth of Persephone. Um, also, I spy books, and I don't know if you um, have ever seen an I spy book, but when my nephew, who is now um, 33, was young, I used to buy him I spy books, and all the little tiny images are hidden within this large photograph, and uh, they're just great, and um, I have a couple of the books. I haven't been able to cut into them, though, <laughs> but that style of photography influenced I, I, a lot of what I do in my collages and also my own story um, which seems to be underlying all of my collages that I do so okay we have the crow up here and now what I want to do is start filling in the background and I found a couple little things um, that I, when I was cleaning up my desk that I really really wanted to include now working with these little teeny tiny pieces is something I love doing it might get frustrating at times but you know there are always um, tweezers and ways to get around it you know trying to manipulate your your pieces and get your fingers to work my dexterity isn't anything like it used to be um, but I manage so anyway I went through my sketchbooks and my art journals and everything and I was just thinking back about the different symbols that I use and um, in my doodles and so on and so forth and there are a couple that really stand out. The spiral I have been doing forever um, and I will sit and doodle spirals and I might go in and put lines in them. Um, you never know but the spiral is the basic shape that um, I, I love to doodle and as you can see I just keep on going sometimes they're round sometimes they're more um, oblong uh, like that but I really love I, I just enjoy drawing that um, then there's the infinity sign and I like to repeat it over and over and over again. And then what I do is I start undoing the infinity sign. 
and I've been doodling this ever since I was a little girl. Now, it could be that it's an L from my first name. I don't know. It's something I would sit and doodle while I was talking on the telephone with my friends, and I would doodle that over and over again. And then the number five, which you all know is an important number to me, the number of change. And then this particular um, symbol, it's a, it's a dot or a circle with another different color dot inside. And I actually started doing that, it's been a long time ago. This particular, um, this particular symbol has been around with me for a long time. And I'll draw a circle and then I'll draw a dot in the middle and fill it in. Or I'll use a paintbrush. And I'll use the end of a paintbrush that's like a large size paintbrush and dip it in paint. Okay, you need two contrasting colors and I have a barn red and a, a pink. Not sure which color pink, but a pink acrylic paint. And you need um, brushes with two different size tips on them. So, okay. So you take your brush and you just dip it in your paint and make a circle as close as you can to a circle. But you just put your brush down, your the tip of your brush. And then another thing I used to like to do was make circles or dots that decrease in size. And you'll see a lot of those um, in my collages. Okay, and then you let those dry and then you come back in with the other color. I started doing this actually when I was painting. I was doing decorative painting. Uh, and this is back in, oh gosh, 1973. I was teaching de decorative painting or toll painting, and I was doing decoys, duck de decoys, and this is a pattern I would do on the sides of the decoys. So let me dry this, I'll be right back. Okay, then you take your other paint and a smaller tip brush. I'm not sure how much paint's in here. I gotta shake it up a little bit. Okay, and you go, you go right inside that first dot and It's one of those things that is very relaxing if you if you do a lot of it. So, and I would also do five petal flowers this way. And um, and I I did these for years. And you start out, you just make a dot with your brush, the wooden end of your brush. And that's the center of your flower. And then you just go around the outside and 
make your petals. So there are a couple different things I used to do with with my with the wooden tip of my brush and you know you can use skewers you can use pointy tools um, a lot of times in my uh, art journal when I'm embellishing uh, page I use my um, I use my acrylic pens and I start let's see where my big ones are And I start with, actually I pick one up that hasn't been used, let's see, okay, I'll start with, and press it down a lot to get a circle, and then just dot it out and release the pressure, and you get something very similar to what you can use your paint for. There's a six petal flower. Usually I don't do six. Usually I do five petals. And then another, um, another symbol that I use a lot is the shooting star. And I just do the five pointed star by hand or you could use a stencil if you wanted but then I make a trail behind it using dotted lines so it's flying through the air it's another one I use I do a crow a lot and I have a stencil with different size crows and um, this one is actually, I think it's a swallow, but I use it for a crow. And I'll show you what I do. Instead of the V tail down here, I just do a rounded tail for the crow. And maybe make his beak a little bit longer. Okay. Then... I do, I also have a lot of triangles in my art. I like triangles, I like drawing them, and circles in my art. Hand-drawn circles, um, circles made with punches. I was taking the little scraps of paper that I had left over and punching out circles this afternoon and um, for me to include in my collages. So, and also connected circles. And these maybe aren't really circles. I used to do drawings that had a, um, you could kind of see through the earth at the bottom of the drawing. And what you were looking at were the stones or rocks underground. And I would do these, but I would color them with color pencils, all different colors, so they look kind of like gems. But I like connecting circles, and they don't have to be perfect circles. And then I also like a couple other things, and I actually found some teeny tiny stamps um, that I can use. And I was, I, I didn't want to put these on a block, on a little block. I didn't want to use my hands and stamp without something to hold on to. So I had this jar of um, chess pieces and checkers, and I thought, you know what? This would make the perfect little stamp. So I glued these little tiny um, stamps onto the bottom of the chess piece and they're all there there's nothing in the middle here but they all fit around this outside edge so I have a really good little thing to hold on to and stamp 
my concentric circles that I just love. So that was one. And then I have another one that is a hand print. So, and I love that. And then I have one that's a flower. Now this is a four petaled flower, but I think it's really pretty. And And then the last one I have is, oh, I have this hand too. And what I would do with that hand is, since the center doesn't stamp, I put a, a spiral in the center. And I really like that. And then the last one that I have is a little heart. And it's just the perfect size, I think. So these are kind of all the, um, oh, there's one more. I do a circle and then I divide it into eighths. And I'm not quite sure why this mesmerizes me, but it does. So I cut it like I'm cutting a pizza. I cut it that way, and then I make an X. And for some reason, that comes up in my doodles a lot. And then I also do one with an X, but then I like to put little dots on the ends of the X. And the last one are what I call basic strokes because that's what they what they're called in the decorative painting that I did back in the 70s. But they're just like little I don't know apostrophes maybe. And then I'll do a flourish. Oops. Hand in paint. Then I'll do a flourish on the end, but I usually do them really fast, you know. So I'm, I'm gradually building up my own dictionary of symbols that I'm gonna be using um, in my collages. And I thought this would be a really, really great place to start. And I also, was, I was trying to think of how I'm going to sign these and not not have it be too out, you know, too outstanding or too obvious. And what I decided, I have these little block letters and I had some bits from old books and so on. So I, all I did was put my initials together, Linda Carroll, Rissa Fedrosky, and then stamp it, whoops, stamp it on a piece of old book page. And then I took the little heart And I off stamped it on something. And then I stamped, I tried to stamp it in the center of those four letters. And I really liked the way that looked. So I made one for this collage and I'm gonna put it right down here. So let's go ahead and put that in. I, I think it's okay, even though it's not finished. And I did go around the outside edges with um, some uh, ink, the coffee ink 
that I used the you know, archival ink. I did go around the edges of this with the archival ink. So I think that works out really well. All right, so now I want to start putting some more detail in the background. And like I said, I had a couple things and I found this little dragonfly and I think it needs to be toned down a little bit. It's just a little bit too white white for this particular piece. And I want things to, I don't know, kind of be dancing in the background in kind of a whimsical way. And, you know, I have all this other stuff that I cut out. Like, here's part of the sewing machine. And I think I can include in here. And that'll help pull, help pull the collage together. And I think they're gonna stick. And when I reach this point, um, I'm, I'm starting to overlap things to continue to pull pieces together. I think this, since this is thicker, I've got to use a different glue. I think what I'm going to do is start doing some stamping in the background. Let's see. And I don't want to repeat this all this, you know, too many times, but You know, this is a little bit scary because once it's down there, it's not going to come back up. You know what I mean? But it's okay. I like that. And let's see. Let's put one here. Let's off stamp it a little bit. And there. And the concentric circles little flower here. I think this one isn't working out real well because I had to put a piece of paper under there. So I'm not I'm not getting a good stamp on that one. I'll have to fix that. 
Okay. I'm just going to go in with my pen and fix these I don't think are quite right. What else do I want to add here in the background? I can bring out my pens. These are my Posca pens. too much. That's okay. Baby wipe to the rescue. Okay. And it just kind of blends in with the poppy that's underneath there. So that works. Shoo. And then I'm gonna go in with another color that is And put a dot, oh, that one ran too, in the middle of my orange ones. Baby wipe to the rescue. Okay, we're good. All right. And what other of my, what other of my, I want to do some spirals.
Let's see what else do I want to do. Maybe some triangles. I'm going to put a spiral in here. Or a hand. And I need a spiral in this hand. And I've been thinking about this tree here. And the way it looks. And um, I need to put a little bit more detail in here. I think I need to um, go around my crow. That helps him stand out a little bit more. Do I want anything else?
Okay, I think um, one thing that I want to do is pull, try and pull all this together. And, you know, part of my thinking about the world and people and everything is that everything's connected in some way. And I'd like to be able to show that in this collage to show the connection between um, and among things. So, I don't know what color I want to use. Um, I think black might be too outstanding, to tell you the truth. But, maybe not. Uh, maybe red? Okay, these are Arteza paint markers. And they're pretty thin. I'm not going to put a lot of pressure on it, but let's start down here on this hand. And I'm just going to put kind of dotted line connecting all the different things that I put in this background. This could have gone behind here and come out here. Back to the beginning. Now, I like that, but I'm not sure it stands out enough. So, I'm going to take my green, my little green marker, and I'm going to make some dots along the way. Okay, now I have that blob. I'm gonna suck up some of that green. Okay, took care of that.
Okay, I could probably continue to work on this in perpetuity, <laughs> but I think I'm going to stop here. Um, I, maybe the only other thing I'll do after I look at it for a while is to make my line thicker around my crow. But um, for now, I gotta say, I really, really like the way this turned out. Um, and I love my little idea for my pawn stamps. And I'm going to have to look for some other uh, symbols that I use that are uh, in stamp form somewhere. Who knows where I'll find them. But that's it. That's my Maximalist Collage Absurd Crow. And I'm really, really pleased with the way he turned out. Now, this washi tape I put on here just so I could have a clean edge on my collage. So let's take that off. Those polka dots really didn't add anything to, <laughs> to the collage itself. Okay. So, here is my first collage, my magic collage <clears throat> in this series. I hope you enjoyed watching me put this together and create uh, something out of, you know, pretty much, pretty much nothing. I mean, most of the stuff would probably have ended up in the trash at some point in time in some century. So now it has a new life in this collage and I'm really, really pleased with the way it turned out. So until next time, I hope you have a great day or evening, whichever the case may be. And I want to wish you many blessings and I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.